Alright, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, as always, before we get started, giving all praise, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachah Kodash. Double honors unto the apostles, the bishops, and the elders of Great Millstone that have taught us his truth and that rule well. And peace and blessings go out to the hopeful members of the elect scattered throughout the four winds of the earth that are in the hopes of receiving salvation and mercy during the time of Jacob Shovel, and that are worshiping the Heavenly Father in sincerity, in spirit, and in truth. All right. Now, this will be a lesson that comes under the topic of just exhorting brethren to embrace the role that we play in prophecy. All right. As we come from a legacy of our forefathers being, you know, taken, conquered, tormented, and abused in all aspects of life, our nation has lost all sight of fighting for what's right. You know, they've, lo they've lost complete sense of having some kind of hope at the end of the tunnel, all right? To the point where our people fall under the category of being nothing more but uh, home-born slaves, thinking that all they matter and all, you know, their whole means of existence is to do nothing more but work a nine-to-five, go home to a, you know, unbalanced household, and do it all over again day by day by day, all right? That's been the condition of our people. But through us finally surnaming ourselves after Jacob and coming to the senses of the condition of the battle via the Holy Spirit, we're taking down strongholds that have taken a very hard grip upon the minds of our people, all right? The simple fact of you calling yourself, you know, from the stock of Jacob, whether it's from southern or northern kingdom, is something divine, okay? As we go out there in the highways and byways week after week, it's something to be very, uh, I guess you could say proud of, but something very, uh, something that shouldn't be taken lightly, okay? It's something that us brethren should thank the Heavenly Father every day, all right? Because when you look at your average so-called Negro, Latino, and Native American, they're stuck up in that um, post-traumatic slave syndrome, all right? of thinking that Esau is their master and that all they are is what Esau categorizes them as, all right? But that's not the case. We're more than conquerors as Apostle Paul says, all right? And in this lesson, I want to show that through us finally coming back to the grip of standing for what's right in the eyes of a, of a wicked society that is set up against us, all right? So with that being said, Lord, Lord this is an edifying lesson for you brothers and sisters. Uh, the first thing that I want to do is actually play this TikTok uh, video that I just stumbled upon, which is actually what queued up the whole premise of this lesson, because it pretty much hits the nail right in the head within the aspect of what we've received, okay? Which is where I get the title regarding, <coughs> excuse me, regarding how we've give, uh, we've received the gift to feel and believe, all right? So with that being said, I'm going to play the video, and of course, throughout the video, I'm going to, you know, dibble and dabble with the scriptures, and in hopes of bringing edification to the forefront, alright? So with that being said, let's get it. Pain, Pain travels, travels through, through families, families until, until someone, someone is ready, ready to feel it. it. For many of us, our, our generational curse is avoidance. We come, we come from, from people who just act like it didn't happen. happen. Right, and that's the mindset of your average uh, Jake, you know? When you bring up the talking point of what happened back from 1492 and on down to around, you know, 1960s when the so-called white man gave us rights, okay? When you bring up that history, our people always make the point of, well, that was in the past. You know, we should forget about it and now move forward in life. But when it comes down to the aspect of the Heavenly Father, the Lord doesn't work that way, all right? The Lord is a power that reaps the crop of what a man has been sowing upon the face of the earth, all right? And as a nation, we've been, you know, beaten down to the bottom by the so-called white man whose biblical nationality goes back to Edom, as well as the other nations, all right? They all haven't paid for the deeds that they've committed against the sons of the Heavenly Father, all right? So what does that mean? There's a set hope for us to await in as we understand that the balance of judgment is still uneven, all right? But like I was saying, throughout Esau, giving our people, you know, the hand of help and aid, our people have become complacent, all right? 
Once you give a nigga a couple shekels, you already bought him. All right. And as a matter of fact, that leads me into this scripture in Lamentations 4 and 17 in the NLT. It says, we looked in vain for our allies to come and save us, but we were looking to nations that could not help us. All right. See, these other nations have done nothing more but have dug in the hole that we've been in deeper and deeper. All right. To the point where you see our people today being nothing more but a product of their image. You know, being nothing more but a bunch of degenerates that stand on nothing but a bunch of vile affections. All right. Verse 18, it says, we couldn't go into the streets without danger to our lives. Our end was near. Our days were numbered. We were doomed. All right. And through the spirit now supping up with the elect as well as to the body of believers, Lord's will myself and you brothers and sisters are a part of, all right, we now understand that. And through the Spirit now supping with us, we now have the aspect of realizing how to walk, being circumspect, having our speech season with salt, walking in wisdom, so on and so forth, all right, to the extent that we no more fall under the category of the set narrative of what Esau deems us to be, Okay. And like I said, that in itself is something divine, all right? Because according to Psalm, uh, the 50th chapter, it was spoken of by King David that this would happen in front of the face of Esau, all right? Let's get that real quick. Uh, Psalm chapter 50 and 16, it says, But unto the wicked, the heavenly Father says, What hast thou to do to declare my statues, or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth, all right? Now, when you're reading the Bible and you run under the term of the wicked, it's predominantly, almost 99% of the chance, always speaking about the so-called white man. And pursuant to Job 9.24, the earth has been given into the hands of the wicked. All right? And as you play, you know, the game of process elimination, you can clearly see that the so-called white man has been the one that has been granted the power of the whole earth. Okay, the one that does not declare the statutes of the Heavenly Father and that swears in the name of the Heavenly Father in vain. All right. It says, seeing thou has, I'm sorry, seeing thou hatest instruction and castest my words behind thee. When thou sawest a thief, then thou consentest with him and has been partaker with adulterers. Thou givest thy mouth to evil and thy tongue frameth deceit. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. All right, verse 21, this is the point. These things hast thou done. All right, this has been the condition of the mind state of your average so-called Negro, Latino, and Native American. They've been spoken against, they've been slandered to the point where they're nothing more but a zombie. All right, doesn't think for himself, but does what the government says because they've lost all sense of hope in their spirit. All right, and I forget that, um, matter of fact, let me just look it up. I believe it's called post-traumatic slave syndrome. Yep. I have the book of this too, but, uh, Jake hasn't had time to read it. But within this, uh, you know, disease, it pretty much depicts the mindset of what our people have fallen into. All right. It says, and it's also a book, it says, in the book... DeGroy argues that PTSS, which is post-traumatic slave syndrome, is a result of unresolved post-traumatic stress disorder arising from the experience of slavery transmitted across generations down to the present day, along with the stress of contemporary ra uh, racial prejudice, e.g. via racial uh, microaggressions, all right? And when you start getting yourself in the midst of the tribes, you see that they're all going through that, all right? Like I said, me, myself, I come from uh, the tribe of Issachar, where Issachar has felt that, you know, to the point where when they come over here to the new world, all right, and start working their butt off to feed their families and have a better life for them, they do nothing more but stress over the fact of work, 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 all right? Not realizing that they're... Uh, what am I looking for? What's the word I'm looking for? That they've lost sense with what they're really fighting for, which is their nation, okay? I believe there was a better... Uh, well, that pretty much hit the... Let's go to Wikipedia. That was pretty much the point. 
But I want to see if there's a little more meat off this bone. Um, yup, this is the point right here. It says, It manifests a psychological, spiritual, emotional, and behavioral syndrome that results in a lack of self-esteem, persistent feelings of anger, and inter internalized racist beliefs. Okay, so this has been the mindset of your average so-called Negro, Latino, Native American. All right, and like I made the point, when it comes down to the aspect of certain tribes like myself, Issachar, they start holding on to these mortal characteristics that they've attained within Esau's world to the point where if you bring something to the table that is against it, they're irritated. Okay, because it doesn't fit the requirements of what Esau has conditioned our people towards, okay? And at times, you know, as brethren deal with their family and their loved ones, that's a very strong stronghold to combat against, all right? And this is one of the many reasons as to why Yahweh would always repeat to the disciples that uh, the enemy, your enemies would come from your own household, all right? This is why Yahweh said that he... Uh, came to the world not to send peace but a sword to divide us from our households that would weigh us down from really embracing and allowing our uh, wings to really fly all right but like I was saying through Esau giving our people aid they've conditioned themselves within that mindset of thinking that they're a homeborn slave all right and they've forgotten with they've forgotten about history all in itself. All right. So let's keep listening. The pain, pain demands, demands to, be to be felt, and somewhere, and somewhere along, along the line, a child, a child will, be will be born. born. Like, that's, like that's a beautiful point. Pain demands to be felt. All right. Our people, like I said, have been beaten down to a bloody pulp to the point where they don't want to feel pain anymore. You know. Jake doesn't want to suffer anymore to the point where, when they're given any kind of hand to help. They take the first uh, opportunity that's offered to them, being Esau, all right? Not knowing that Esau is doing nothing more but leading them to a ditch, all right? But like uh, this dude is making the point, there would come a time where that change would manifest itself to those that would embrace the pain, all right? And like I said earlier, it all started off with our Lord, Yahawashai, all right? Charge to feel it all. Let's play back a little. A child will be born. All right. And pursuant to Isaiah the eleventh chapter, let's get that real quick. That child is Yahushai. That was given the lot. Okay, to be that child that opens the door for us to partake within the suffering process. Excuse me. So this is Isaiah chapter 11 and starting at 1. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Alright? And for those that don't know, Jesse is the father of David. Okay? And as you read the New Testament, something that would always that they would always call Yahawashai is the son of David. Alright? Which is the root of Jesse being the Messiah, Yahawashai. Alright? Verse 2, it says, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't finish one. It says, And a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of Yahweh. All right? And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor, and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. Alright? And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. Okay? And this is what Yahweh established when he was in the flesh. Alright? But a part of this process of what Yahweh went through was nothing but suffering. Alright? And when you go into Isaiah the 53rd chapter, 
It speaks about what? A suffering servant. All right? So this is Isaiah uh, 53 and... Matter of fact, let's start at the top. It says, Isaiah 53 and 1. Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Heavenly Father revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. All right? He has no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. All right? Why? Because what Yahweh would do is a work of love that we truly wouldn't understand until he gave himself up as that living sacrifice. All right? That's why when Yahweh you know, met the disciples, he had told them that meet over there in uh, Jerusalem, all right, for the day of Pentecost, if I'm not mistaken, which is roughly during the time of uh, April, all right, where spring would play, uh, play its part, which is during the time when what would be given to the disciples? The Spirit, the Comforter that would give them the understanding to embrace and feel what Yahweh felt, okay? So let's keep reading. Lord's will, you brothers are following along, and it's all making sense. So it says, uh, verse 3, He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. And we hid it as it were our faces, I'm sorry, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, Smiting of the Heavenly Father and afflicted. Alright? So that was the position as to what Yahweh did in the, in the flesh. Alright? And as we're following along in this video, this is what Yahweh sacrifice did. Alright? Through this child being born, the gate of mercy was not only open, but the gate of understanding. Alright? That's why when you read Revelation, the fifth chapter, it tells us that the seals in the book were um, taken off, understanding was opened. Okay. Whose charge it is to feel it all. These are your, These are your shamans, shamans, your priests, your priests and priestesses, your healers. Your healers. You, call them you call them mental health, health patients. patients. You call them mental health patients. And that's pretty much the mindset of what people call us when we now refrain ourselves from this world. You know? When you listen to the points that we make when we go out there in the highways and byways of a kingdom being established in righteousness of the Heavenly Father recompensing our enemies according to what they've done unto us, a lot of people look at us as if we're freaks, as if we need help, as if we're mental patients, all right? But it's nothing more but us dealing with reality, all right? And reality is a tough pill for a lot of people to swallow, all right? And if you're not a number of the elect or affiliated within the bodies, uh, I'm sorry, if you're not affiliated with the body of believers, you're not going to get this. All right. This is something that is required to um what's the word I'm looking for? If you don't have a strong stomach, put it to you like that. You're not going to get this. Okay? The label the label power, power is power depression, depression anxiety, anxiety, bipolar, bipolar disorder, disorder and the like. But these but are the these ones, are the who, ones are who are born with the gift, gift of feeling. And as we, and all, as we know, all know, these are the ones that are born with the gift of feeling. All right? To embrace what comes with a lot of understanding the condition of the battle. Alright? Now the word feel. When you get that in the etymology. It goes back to the old English from... Doesn't give us a date. But when it's uh, defined under the verb connotation. It says to touch or have a sensory experience of. Alright? Just like when you touch, you know, a hot pan. Alright? Your sensory receptors tell you that that thing is hot. Don't touch it again. All right? It says in late old English, having a mental perception. All right? Now let's look up this uh, definition for mental perception. Under AI overview, it says mental perception is the ability to infer the mental states of others, such as their beliefs, feelings, intentions, and desires. All right? It's a hallmark of human cogn uh, cognition, and people can do it automatically and effortlessly. Okay? 
go down boom this is the point it says mind perception occurs along two independent dimensions experience and agency experience is related to the capacity for pleasure hunger and fear while agency is related to the capacity for memory planning and self-control all right and through Yahweh giving us the gift of faith which is what saves us all right we're now able to feel the same perception of what he felt all right like we're reading on Isaiah the 53rd chapter Yahweh carried sorrow and grief with him all right and when you start worshiping the Heavenly Father in sincerity and in truth this straight gate is nothing but full of you being sorrowful and caught up in grief okay the reality of what the Bible entails is something that a lot of people can't fathom all right and like I was saying through Yahweh sacrifice he's opened the gate for us to feel it and to stomach it for the purpose of us now serving the Heavenly Father in the correct manner okay it's been far too long well of course everything is according to prophecy but this world has been um, this world has ran far too long without the fear of the Heavenly Father all right but now through what we're doing it's something very beautiful man all right and that leads me to this next scripture that I have queued up in the book of 2nd Ezra 7 and matter of fact I think I got this in the so lucky let me get it in the KJV because at times in the GNT for certain chapters of the Apocrypha it does um, go off here and there let me just do this second is your seven KJV second is your seven and let's start at let me start at 22 it says nevertheless they were not obedient unto him but spake against him and imagined vain things and deceived themselves by their wicked deeds, and said of the Most High that he is not, and knew not his ways. But his laws they have despised, and denied his covenants. In his statutes have they not been faithful, and have not performed his works. Alright? And this has been the condition of the battle of where we've stood as a nation. Alright? We've been disobedient unto the Heavenly Father. We have stirred him up to wrath. And the Lord has let loose his whooping stick, being Esau, to destroy us all right but like we're making the point there would come a time where the Heavenly Father would send Yahweh Shai, his only begotten son to bear that grief to bear that sorrow so that we could have the ability and power to now bear it ourself okay verse 25 and therefore Ezra's for the empty are empty things and for the full are the full things behold the time shall come that these tokens which I have told thee shall come to pass, and the bride shall appear, and she coming forth shall be seen, that now is withdrawn from the earth. And whosoever is delivered from the foresaid evils shall see my wonders. Verse 28, this is the point. For my son, Yahawashai, shall be revealed with those that be with him, and they that remain shall rejoice within 400 years. All right? Now, real quick, I want to look into my notes because when you do the history concerning the time period of Ezra's, which I want to say was roughly around, um, where's my Apocrypha? Here it is. I believe it was roughly around 700 BC. All right. And doing the math through subtracting uh, the 400 years, you would fall under the category of the time period of the time when Yahweh was in the flesh, all right? Now, I'm sorry, I had misspoken, but during the time of Ezra's, it was 480 BC, all right? I think I was thinking of another prophet, but real quick, let's just look at 480 BC. And just do this, Bible. Let's see what pulls up. Yep, in 480 BC, Xerxes I, all right, led the Persian army into Europe and won victories at Thermopylae and Artemisium, all right? 
These events are described in the Bible in the book of Esther, which is set in the days of Xerxes. The book of Esther is unique in the Bible because it doesn't mention God directly, but some say that God's hand is evident in the story, which is facts, all right? But within that time, roughly, it was speaking about the time period of Ezra, all right? And if I'm not mistaken, I do have a little time chart with some dates concerning the kings, but it also has a time period of, let me see here, the prophets. And that doesn't work. Um, let me see here. You got Obadiah, Nahum, Isaiah, which took place during the 17, uh, Salakia, the 7th, uh, 700 uh, BC, which is during the time of Assyria. I think that's what I was mistaken with. All right. But like we read over here, this is during the time of Babylon, all right, which was during the 600 BC. And when you go further into the history, you got Cyrus, all right, Darius. And then after those, you would have who? Xerxes, okay, which would happen during roughly around 480 BC, which is what we have here for Ezra, all right? So now when you do the math of Ezra being 458 BC, which is the number that they have, and you subtract 400, which is the number that Ezra was told about, who would come? Yahawashai, all right, which is roughly during the time of, you know, the AD. All right, so now let's keep reading. It says, For my son Yahawashai shall be revealed with those that be with him, and they that remain shall rejoice within four hundred years. After these years shall my son Yahawashai die, and all men that have life, and the world shall be turned into the old silence seven days, like as in the former judgment, so that no man shall remain. But the point being is that when Yahawashai came, what had happened? Prophecy took place where he would give himself up as that living sacrifice, and he would give all men life, all right? And that first took place with who? The disciples, the apostles, all right? The ministry of Peter would blossom into something that was very divine, all right? Where you would have Israelite foreigners through all four winds of the earth, from Cappadocia, from so on and so forth, all right? Waking up to the reality that they are the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? During that time period, we knew who we were. Alright? But through the process of us waking up the Israelite foreigners. Alright? The process of what Yahushua's sacrifice would awake. Alright? But there would... <clears throat> excuse me. There would occur another falling away. Where we would completely fall away of our uh, nationality, all right? And that's pursuant to the book of Jeremiah 17 and 4. It says, And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thy heritage that I gave thee, and it will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not, for ye have kindled a fire in my anger, which shall burn forever, all right? When did this happen? When the nations took us under a hardcore slavery. First starting off with the northern tribes via the Assyrians, sending them over here to the western hemisphere, and then down to the southern tribes that would be in the Middle East, but through the process of Rome falling, through the process of us being persecuted by the uh, you know so-called Arabs, we would be taken under the... Uh, uh, damn, I'm drawing a blank. The Transatlantic Slave Treaty, all right? Where we would fully fall away from our true heritage and fall under the category of catching hell, all right? But the same process of what happened during the time of the disciples would occur again, all right? Where truth would be declared, all right? And this is the process of what's occurring upon the face of the earth right now, all right? Now, in order to back up that statement that I made, I want to get this in the book of Acts chapter 17 and start at 22. All right, which pretty much puts a cap upon what I was saying for the purpose of making light upon the process that you see happening throughout the four winds of the earth. All right, the Israelites coming back to who they are and finally declaring a work of old that the world has not seen in a very, very long time. All right, so this is Acts chapter 17 and 22. 
Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. For as I passed by and behold your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you, being Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh All right? And throughout the process of Jake being in, you know, the process of catching hell, they would worship other gods. They would try and find some kind of hope, some kind of faith for the purpose of trying to cope with their captivity. All right? Now, of course, it wouldn't be according to knowledge, but through the Heavenly Father pouring out His Spirit, you would have men like Apostle Paul to declare the truth. All right? And going back during the time of 1969, this is what the Heavenly Father did. All right? And pursuant to Malachi, the fourth chapter, the Heavenly Father would send the spirit of Elijah back through a man that we know through faith being Abba Bivens that would bring back the heart to the sons, back to the Father. All right? Verse uh, 24. It says, The Heavenly Father that made the world and all the things therein, seeing that He is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he gave it to all life and breath and all things. All right. And has made, oh, I'm sorry. Right. And has made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on, on all the earth. Salakia. I'm drawing a blank. Verse 26. And has made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth and has determined the times before appointed and the bonds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after him, and find him. All right? And who was given the ability to feel Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai? The tribes. All right? You so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans have the mental perception to seek the Heavenly Father because it's within your genes, it's within your bloodstream to know the Heavenly Father. All right? Now, when you go into the word feel in the Greek, it goes back to the Strong's G5584. The word there is um, selafo, all right? <clears throat> and it says, to handle, touch, and feel metaphorically, mentally to seek after tokens of a person or a thing. And what's that person? Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, man, all right? So this is the process that you see happening as you see the 12 tribes of Israel going out there in the highways and byways. All right? It's them seeking the Heavenly Father under the banner of truth. All right? Uh, where we leave off of? Uh, verse 28. It says, For in Him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring, which also shows that the audience that Apostle Paul was speaking to were Israelites, all right? Those that spirit bared witness that they were the sons of God based upon what they wrote within their poetry, all right? And through Apostle Paul bringing it full circle, he declared unto them that they're from the same kin, okay? Which is what the word offspring pretty much means, all right? It says, For as much then as we are the offspring of the Heavenly Father, we ought not to think that the Heavenly Father, I'm sorry, that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. And the times of this ignorance the Heavenly Father winked at, but now commendeth all men everywhere to repent. All right? And this is the message that the Heavenly Father is broadcasting via his servants and prophets. All right? to repent unto the Heavenly Father, to get back in one accord with Him by believing and feeling Yahweh Shai, and now being brought back into the true genus of who they are upon the face of the earth. Okay? Verse 31. Because He has appointed a day in the which He will judge the world in righteousness by that man who He has ordained, whereof He has given assurance unto all men, and that He has raised Him from the dead. All right, being the good news that Yahweh Shai has made us ministers of. All right, verse 32. And when they heard the resurrection of the dead, some mocked. All right, and that's who you have a lot of. 
okay? A lot of our people thinking that we're making this out of thin air, all right? But not seeing how, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Superstitious it really is. How divine this act that we're doing is, all right? And others said, we will hear thee again of this matter. So Paul departed from among them, howbeit certain men clave unto him, and believed, among the which Dionysius the uh, Areopagite, and a woman named Dam uh, Damarius, and others with them. Alright? They had the gift to feel and believe, contrary to the others that were mocking. Alright? But this is the labor of love that we're presenting unto our nation. Alright? We're returning them back to the Heavenly Father, and now setting them within the, tr uh, the true and proper lane of how to worship the Heavenly Father in sincerity and in truth. Alright? So with that, I want to get one more scripture, and then from here, I'm going to just let the video play one more time, and that will be the conclusion of this lesson. Alright? 1 Timothy 4 and 11. These things command and teach. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying of the hands of the presbytery. So these are actions that we're supposed to be putting into play. All right, Actions of what shows that we're obedient to the Heavenly Father, and show that we're really about believing in Him. Okay? And those aspects are things that you get when you come around the brotherhood of the Heavenly Father. Alright? So with that being said, Lord's Lord, this was an edifying lesson for you, brothers and sisters. I, I wanted to make it pretty quick. I just wanted to touch upon the point of, you know, really seeing that what we're doing is something very uh, divine, man. Alright? What we do transcends the common course of what Esau's world deems us as. Alright? So we really got to embrace it and, you know, show our true colors when we can. Alright? So with that being said, like I said, I'm going to play this video, and then from there I'm going to just close out. But once again, giving all praise, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Recha HaKodash. Double honors unto the apostles, the bishops, the elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings unto the elect. Until next time, Shalom. Pain travels travels through families until someone is ready to feel it. For many, For many of us, us our generational curse, curse is avoidance. We come from, we come people, from people who just who act, just like, act it like it didn't happen. But pain, but pain demands, demands to, be to be felt. And somewhere, and somewhere along, along the line, a child, a child will, be will be born whose charge, whose charge it is, it is to, feel it all. to feel it all. These are your These shamans, your priests, your priests and priestesses, your healers. Your healers. You, call you call them mental health, health patients and label, and their, label their power as depression, depression anxiety, anxiety, bipolar disorder and the like. But these, are, but the these are the ones who are born with the gift, the gift of feeling. And as we, and all, as know, we all know, you can't you heal can't the pain that you refuse to feel. To feel.